Hello again, this is Kyle. Today, let's break some code. We're gonna be talking about content security policies and I have here an example website. And how this website's constructed is not very important because basically content security policies can apply to any website. Uh, it doesn't matter how it's constructed. But I'll go ahead and I'll walk through this app just so you can get uh, your bearings on what's going on here. So first we have just a simple form of where I think bears are the best and then I want to ask other people what they think. And so they are free to type in whatever they want, whatever they want into the box and then hit send and then it will list all the other people's thoughts. Uh, on, on my website. And so here we just have an HTML file with all the HTML. Um, and then it's just gonna be using some templating here to go through and loop through all the comments. And so if we go here to our server, um, all of this is not really important. It's, it's some basic stuff and this is not necessary for um, content security policy. It's just a example application just to, to show you. Um, and so anyways, when we're gonna request the index file, we're just gonna browserify our index.js here. This is all our client side scripts. Um, and then if they're requesting the CSS, we're just gonna give them the CSS file directly here. Um, and then if they want to add a comment, what we're gonna do is we're going to get the data that they're posting to this, and then we're gonna put it into our database. Um, and then by default, we're just gonna serve off our template here, which is our index file that gets rendered using this low dash template here. And it feeds in all the comments that we get from the database here. And the, how this is all constructed is really, again, not important. Uh, it's just an example app just to show you uh, some of the security concerns around it. Okay, so we have this simple form in which we want users to input what they think about bears. And this might be hard to believe, but some people on the internet are not very nice. And they may enter something of this sort, a script tag with the document body inner HTML set to their own message. And so when we send this through, you'll see that our website has been hacked. And even when we refresh, this is the message we get. Um, any visitor that goes to our website will get the same message too. That's not right. I don't want people to think that bears are lame. I don't think bears are lame. So if you look at the actual source of the website, you'll notice that it is our normal source code, except that in here where it's supposed to display the user's comment, it's injecting this script tag. This is known as a cross-site scripting attack or an XSS attack. So one way to fix this is to sanitize uh, the, the input um, as it comes in before it reaches our database. So there's many sanitization libraries on uh, NPM. I'm gonna be using this one called sanitize um, HTML here. And I'm gonna type NPM I or NPM install sanitize HTML to install it. And uh, start my server back up here again. Um, and then I'm gonna go here to our server, uh, and before it inputs um, our comment here into the database, I'm gonna sanitize it uh, using this library. So we'll require it up here, sanitize, require, sanitize, HTML. And what this will do is it'll strip out all of the, those nasty um, HTML stuff that we don't want. We just want normal text contents. Um, and so then now when we go back and uh, refresh our server here and then go back to the site and uh, insert into this, this, uh, um, this attack here, you'll see that we, don't, we no longer get it. When, before it enters our database, it strips out, uh, it strips out that script tag. Uh, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it that we could do is uh, low dash uh, by default, or when you use this uh, equal sign here, um, it inserts the, uh, the HTML unescaped. Uh, but instead, if you use this, uh, you can escape the HTML. So there's one way to do it when the, in, when the user's input's coming into the server, and there's another way when it's coming out. Um, and each of your, depending on your template library um, and whatever you're using, uh, will have different ways of escaping uh, the, any, any kind of uh, thing that's displayed. And really, you should be doing both. Uh, you should be escaping when it's going in um, and sanitizing when it's going in and uh, escaping when it's coming out. Just in case somebody managed to inject something in your database through some method, um, it still won't be displayed on the output and the vice versa. 
Now, this app is very simple. It doesn't really do much, and most apps are not that simple. They do a lot of things. And so 99% of the time, you really don't want users to run their own script tags on your site. So wouldn't it just be easier just to disable all of that in the browser? And that's exactly what a content security policy does. So I'm gonna remove the escaping here um, and remove the sanitization here. So here in our server, all we need to do is we need to send an HTTP header to the browser to tell it to enable this content security policy. And so it doesn't matter whether you're using uh, Ruby or Python or PHP or any server really, each server has their own method of responding with headers. Uh, here with Node.js, uh, we can do the response, we can say set header here. And, um, and we can set the response header here. And so one of the headers I'm gonna set is called content security uh, policy with dashes in between. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a script dash source and in quotes to self. Now I'm gonna go here to my server and I'm gonna restart it. And then go here to my website, refresh the page and try this attack once again. And you'll see here at the bottom here, we, our browser has refused to execute, execute the inline script because it violates the content security policy. So we don't have any sanitization going on right now, but it's recommended that you do sanitize, you still continue to. Um, but in case maybe we missed a part uh, that we didn't sanitize or the, the attacker has figured out a way around our sanitization, um, the browser still here uh, didn't allow this attack to take place. So just with one line here, uh, one line we're adding here, uh, we have mitigated so many different attacks that could have been done on, on our browser. So currently our policy disallows uh, any kind of inline scripts or uh, script sources that don't come from self or it's our, our own domain. Now, there might be instances where you actually want uh, scripts to be um, injected or come from other sources, uh, such as if you're using uh, Google Fonts. Um, then what you would simply do is using uh, a space to separate it, uh, you specify the domain names that you uh, trust. So we can say APIs uh, google.com here, and we can add that to our, um, our content security policy. And so now if Google needs to add any scripts in order to run, it will be allowed to do so. So that takes care of JavaScript, but now what about CSS? Many people look over style sheets as a potential security threat, but let's go ahead and check our app here. And um, I'm gonna insert in something else that's a little bit more malicious here. Bears are the best. Just kidding, they are lame. Oh no, using a CSS attack here, they have hacked our website once again, and anybody that goes to it is gonna think that I'm just kidding, that they, they are lame, and that's not what I, that's not what I think. So we need, to, uh, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen as well. And so uh, we, we do the same thing, but instead we're gonna, we're gonna put a little semicolon here to say that we're gonna specify a new rule here. And we're gonna say style-source uh, is self. And so this means we only want styles uh, to come from ourself as well um, and not allow any of this inline stuff going on. And so now when we go here and roll our server, and refresh the page, you see that it also has uh, refused to apply this inline style because it violates our content security policy. Exactly what we want. They can't hack our website uh, using style tags either. So now this does block uh, inline styles uh, on our page and inline styles have become uh, a lot more popular, uh, they're more and more frequently used now. And so uh, there might be some instances where we don't really wanna block them. Now we can, we can there's, there's settings in our, um, in, in our content security policy where we can say uh, unsafe inline that, that basically allows us to put uh, in, um, unsafe inline styles um, and we don't want to do that though we, we want to just uh, we want to work around our own kind of thing here so uh, let me give you an example of what a, a, an inline style would be so we have this h1 tag here uh, for bears are the best here and I'm just gonna query selector it uh, h1 here um, and then maybe, you know, I'm doing maybe I need to do some kind of calculation that can only be done once the, the 
JavaScript has been loaded and, and everything, and we need to detect maybe like the width or, or something to center it, or there's whatever reason. We're setting this, uh, this style attribute here on, on this tag. Uh, we're setting it dynamically, and we need to here. So for just this uh, example here, I'm gonna set it to red. Um, and then let's add like a text shadow because it's going to look super, super cool. Uh, I don't know, black text shadow here. So we're going to set this, uh, this style attribute here. And just to show here, I'm going to disable um, our content security policy and roll our server just to show what I want it to look like. Oh, no, we've been hacked. Let me go ahead and uh, clear this uh, database here first clear out any any of that malicious stuff that we've uh, we've been uh, attacked with before okay so now this is this is what we want because uh, that looks awesome you know it's it's that but so now we're gonna go ahead and re-enable our content security policy which includes the style source uh, self, self uh, um, declaration here and roll our server to get that and so now when we do this uh, it's refusing to apply this inline style uh, to it because uh, this part here, when we're setting this style attribute, this is an inline style. This violates our content security policy. And it's really simple to get around. Instead of setting the, the style attribute, you should set it uh, directly um, how you should. So we'll say style uh, color equals red, h1, style text shadow, equals one pixel, one pixel, one pixel, black. So we're setting this these, these properties directly on the style um, uh, um, object here. And so now uh, when we refresh the page, you see even though we have our content security policy in place, we still get the, the inline styles we want. So it's just slight difference here is instead of applying it to the style tag, uh, which you know users may uh, or attackers may be able to inject some malicious code into here we can simply apply it directly to each of the properties in which uh, is a bit more safe now if you if you're not a really a fan of I mean maybe you have a whole bunch of styles to apply and you're not really a fan of this uh, there's a uh, I got a, a, a fancy trick from um, Matt uh, Desl Desloyer I, I don't know how to say his last name and I apologize um, so what we're going to do is we're going to install, uh, we're going to do npm install object assign here and save that to our dev dependencies. And then I'm just going to go ahead and require it here. So we'll say object assign. Now object assign is uh, a, an API that's coming uh, in newer browsers and it may not be available. It's not, it's not available everywhere yet. Um, Oh, I forgot an S here. Uh, let's uh, make sure we spell things correctly with two S's. Uh, and I got two S's here. Okay, yeah, there's definitely two S's in there. Let's start up our server here. So object assign is yeah, it's a it's a new it's a new API in in newer browsers. It may not be available here, but uh, Cinder Source has got us uh, covered here with this library that that gives it a you know this uh, this this thing that we want here so instead of doing it this ugly way we can do it this way we can say assign and we're going to supply an object here and we're going to just going to give it properties that it's going to assign to this uh, this style object here so we can say color red and text shadow and I'm not going to type that again because typing that three times is just ridiculous and so let's save that and our server's running, so let's go ahead and refresh the page. And so this is just a, a nice fancier way, and it's still secure, and we can set all the CSS properties in line as much as we want. So I hope this has convinced you to enable the content security policy on your website, and not only should you be sanitizing the input as it's coming into your database or server or wherever it lives, and then escaping the output as it goes out to the browser, but I, I really heavily encourage you to enable a content security policy for both JavaScript and style sheets uh, and just make everything, uh, make, make your life easier, make everything more secure and don't have to deal with those nasty uh, cross-site scripting attacks. Um, and if this has helped you, then please share the video and help others. And if you wanna see more videos, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.